the name Jay Sadal's with me. And um, I don't really know what to say with this one. Uh, it, it seems that, you know, that uh, we're appealing to a much more invasive form of policing um, to solve very real problems. And, and it seems to have corollaries for me, at least on the outside, to the idea of, of regulating children's behavior during school hours and after hours. It seems to relate to the curfew where we're enhancing sort of the negative sides of the criminal justice system rather than looking at, you know, we have relatively basic problems in Oakland, like the 28%, as I remember, murder solve rate and a multi-year backlog on evidence involved in murders in a crime lab that doesn't know which cases are active or not, so they can't prioritize the work they're doing. So we're scram it seems that it's scrambling for solutions when there's very practical problems that need to be addressed. And that maybe if we were starting with more basic problems like properly funding a crime lab to prosecute murderers, we wouldn't be scrambling for new and creative ways to enable the police to watch you everywhere you go. Um, and there's a deeper problem, and that's that, you know, locked into like a 1950s patrol car mentality of sending police to intervene rather than, I think, a more contemporary perspective, which the book Good Cops, if you want to look into it, by David Harris, a police law professor, detailing police accountability and community oriented policing in different departments that have done around the nation, exposes that if you have an accountable police department, you have a more effective one, that the police accountability is a real crime fighting tool. So if you want to get creative, I suggest Good Cops by David Harris. He's not a critic. He's actually expounding different tools different departments around the nation have done. And it doesn't involve the all-seeing eye or... Dude, we're in the age of NSA PRISM and the government constantly spying us. We don't need more spying. Thank you. We don't have to keep building this prison around us right now. Your name? Uh, Eric Houston. I think I was supposed to speak third, but the whoever was second didn't. We'll take it in any order. order. No, okay, no problem. <laughs> um, yeah, we don't have to keep building this prison around us. The problem with this whole kind of idea of the surveillance center and making everybody safer is that if we're trying to take steps to prevent the senseless violence of terrorism, this is buying right into what those people want our government to do. They want it to spend money to do things that delegitimize it. Okay, we saw that with the wars that have been going on forever in Iraq and Afghanistan. And we see that now with the way that the surveillance state is creeping up in ways that a lot of people didn't imagine possible. And that has a profound effect. If people can't trust the government, that's a big problem. And I think this kind of thing is totally moving in the wrong direction. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Ryan Rising. Um, I think it's really obvious to me and some of the people that I've been dialoguing with what's happening here. And it's not something that's coming organically out of Oakland, which is what the things that we implement in the city of Oakland should be. This is something that's coming at us at a federal level and using Oakland as a test laboratory for something that is looking at being expanded all across the United States right now. And Oakland's being looked at to do this because of the history and because of the amount of crime and the amount of violence that occurs in the city. And so it's an easy one for people to be able to look past and see as it being a reasonable thing to have this greater amount of surveillance and enforcement when in fact the people of Oakland know that the only way that we survive, that we solve crime and we solve the problems happening in our own city is through the kind of things that people were speaking about during the talk over the curfew, which is social programs 
and healthcare and things that enable people to have a more equal access to meeting their own needs and not through further enforcement and further surveillance. And so I think this is something that really needs to be brought back to the drawing board. I think what's happening right now with this nuclear arms related company being seen as unable to fulfill their mandate in creating the center is actually just an energetic window of opportunity for people to really look at, is this something really we really want to be in our city and to kind of pull this back to the drawing board and come to a community decision-making process with each other and decide how we want to go about this. Because I think if people really look at this issue and take a moment, they don't want to see an increase of what's been happening nationally happen as a test lab in the city of Oakland. I think people are actually very frustrated and upset with what's been happening at the national level in terms of surveillance. And I really can't believe that in this time when Edward Snowden and WikiLeaks and the president himself are talking about the problematic surveillance that's been happening, that we're looking in locally in our own community at creating something that's only going to further that and allow for even more abuses of what's already been happening at the federal level. Thank you. Um, my name is Zegem Kabir. I'm here to speak against uh, uh, the Domain Awareness Center and ask you to uh, not authorize the city administrator to look for a new company to award the contract to. Um, this Domain Awareness Center, it's, uh, it's unprecedented for American cities to have this level of surveillance against uh, their citizens. Um, this is the furthest we're, we've gone in America towards an Orwellian police state. This is the worst attack on human liberty that we're facing here. Every single resident and visitor of Oakland that's going to be driving is going to be tracked and their whereabouts are going to be in a database. You're tracking every person inside the city. This is unprecedented. Uh, we can't do this. And um, like people are saying, right now there's all this anti-surveillance sentiment. People do not want surveillance. Um, when, you, when you push for something like this um, against, community, against the community's will, you're, you're just forcing us to organize more um, and, um, you know, to put more pressure on the city council members who are, who are responsible for this. Um, the New York Times put this on the cover of, the, of, a, of their newspaper a couple weeks ago, warning, as a warning to all American cities that this is, this is what's coming. So even the New York Times thought that this was a, a serious enough issue, an attack on privacy, to put it on the cover. So. Um, this is really unprecedented in scale, and we need to stop this, so it's going to spread to other cities all across America. Just imagine everybody in Oakland is going to be tracked. Wherever you go, your, your movements are being tracked in a database. That's insane. We cannot have that. And this is going to lead to more, more of this, and we have to stop it now. So I, I, I urge you to not allow this to go forward, to, to allow more community, uh, community input. All right, thank you. Thank you. So this is a, uh, this situation presents the perfect opportunity for you guys to kill this project. So why should you kill this project? One issue is that a democratically implemented surveillance system should require approval from the community and transparency from the government. It should be a collaboration. That's the opposite of what we've been getting here. OPD has been pushing the surveillance system in secret with no input and no transparency. The community should understand exactly what the system is, what it does, and what it's used for. We know none of that. There's rampant speculation in the community about what the system can do because it's all been done in secret. We don't know what it does. Um, our group, uh, there's a privacy group, we filed a public records request about the, we wanted to know the technological design of the system, the location of the cameras, but we were told that we are not allowed to know this information. It's secret, sensitive. To contrast, in Seattle, they also received federal money for surveillance, but their police held community meetings, they explained the system, they gathered feedback, they made changes based on the feedback from the community, Every one of the Seattle's cameras has a sign notifying the public that they may be recorded. They even have a citizen committee that is able to review the video that is gathered. It's the opposite of what's happening here. No public input, no information how the system works, and we're not allowed to know where the cameras are located. 
So OPD distress the community, the community distress OPD, there's no input, no feedback. I urge you to oppose this problem. Thank you. My name is Joshua Smith, and I'm a resident of Oakland. Um, we were here before shaming you for hiring a company that is involved in nuclear weapons procurement. SAIC also trains for interrogation. SAIC facilitates the telecommunications for the drone program in Afghanistan. It's murdered over a thousand innocent civilians, including children. And this is the company you chose. I would like to know what genius vetted this company. Dan Kalb, I remember you saying, it sounds great when it was presented to you, without any research or looking into it at all. SAIC is known as NSA West to those in inner circles. SAIC headquarters is on the same street as Central Intelligence Agency in McLean. SAIC is partnering with ITSIS, which is right across the street from SAIC in McLean, Virginia. Anytime you see the word McLean, Virginia, it's a red flag, you have a problem, okay? Now, in regard to McLean and CIA, the city of Oakland runs its website via a mechanism from a company called Socrata. Socrata is invested by a company called InQtel, I-N-Q-T-E-L, which is the venture capital arm of the CIA. Look it up. The company that handles all the LPR data, license plate readers that are on the Oakland police cars, which to date I believe we have 14 to 16, which in any time can become standard issue. And they just don't have to be on police cars. They can be on street lights, telephone poles. The database for LPR data is handled by a company called Palantir, which is CIA funded, P-A-L-A-N-T-I-R. Look it up. Whoever's advising you all, well, I don't know if anybody is, or you're not doing any of your research, but you're just in the pocket of DHS, which is a domestic police force, and you're going to criminalize dissent while you're militarizing the police. And if you ever, ever implement facial recognition into the system, expect resistance. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.